Uh, good afternoon to everybody. Assalamu <coughs> alaikum. Today we'll continue on uh, matrix simulation. Just to remind what we had last week. We started with matrix simulation stating that uh, the Matrix simulation is uh, designed to increase well productivity, uh, involves a injection of the acid in the formulated uh, chemical composition uh, of acids, uh, certain type of acids into the uh, near world war zone through the perforations or the uh, completion. And success depends on uh, choosing correct well uh, choosing correct uh, formula for acid type and uh, the placement. Uh, the acid should be uh, injected or directed into the um, proper uh, damaged zones to, to, to provide the maximum effect. Uh, the aim of the uh, wall simulation, matrix acidization, uh, particularly is to increase the parameter that will increase the uh, flow equation or decrease the um, <coughs> skin from the formation damage, uh, decrease this uh, ratio by increasing um, actual or uh, effective well bore radius and uh, the decreasing viscosity. Uh, these are the some uh, kind of uh, flowchart of uh, remedy uh, methods for limited inflow performance. These are um, some kind of a short list of techniques of simulations, including uh, probed hydraulic fracturing, explosive fracturing, uh, underliming additional perforations, chemical methods, biological methods, and some other thermal uh, combined uh, methods. This is the uh, These all are. Uh, in your book so you can go through. <clears throat> Again, we mentioned uh, the importance of the near World War zone effect on the production that uh, and the damage actually happens, occurs in the near, very near World War zone. Therefore, the, um, it is very important to keep this uh, to uh, uh, concentrate on this near zone uh, uh, to clean the formation damage or to bypass the, the formation damage to uh, increase the um, inflow from the reservoir from the uh, uh, original uh, permeability into the well ball. And here you can see effect of damage against effect of stimulation and the same uh, rate of damage and stimulation, we can see that impairment of 80% uh, with the depths with the, at the same depths of the, um, let's say 1.5 uh, feet of damage radius, 80% uh, 80 of damage will affect uh, <clears throat> the flow efficiency at 60%. Oh, yeah. And uh, but increasing the formation permeability by the 80%, the same uh, um, kind of um, reverse or increasing that by the same amount of uh, a percentage will only provide the um, 
small increase even at the uh, three feet. If we increase the uh, permeability of the three feet, the only small effect on the flow efficiency, uh, even less than 10% uh, effect, we can see from the uh, improvement of 80%. So 80% damage affects the well production at 60% flow efficiency, as you can see this one uh, here. But a 80% uh, improvement, even uh, if we improve the uh, permeability up to the three feet around the well bore, will provide very low uh, effect. And that's because of uh, small area to, for improvement. OK, and uh, this is the uh, damage color. This happens when we uh, apply some uh, stimulation and clean the uh, near well bore area and the they might be uh, uh, pushing forward into the reservoir uh, of the damaged zone and precipitations and this damage color may occur uh, around the uh, at some in at some distance from the well bore so that's the effect of this color depending on the color thickness the thickness of this um, zone and uh, the um, and the distance to this zone from the well bore. And as you can see, uh, the color thickness of three feet, of course, will uh, give the maximum uh, negative effect on the um, productivity. And the distance, as we increase the distance from the well bore, the effect, the negative effect of uh, the uh, this color is um, reduced and at uh, enough uh, distance if we are able to push this color or damage zone away from the well by let's say 10 feet then uh, we may have around uh, uh, 90 um, percent of flow efficiency. Sorry. And so. Sorry, can I ask a question? Yes. Uh, my question is related to previous slide. Maybe you explain it, but due to some sound problems, I missed uh, this part. Uh, in previous uh, slide, we have chart, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, I mean graph. Uh, percentage of undamaged uh, permeability in x-axis. This one? Yes, uh, this one. Uh, actually, I couldn't get what does it mean, like percentage of undamaged permeability. Well, so it is 10% is undamaged, uh, maximum 10% is undamaged, and 90% is damaged from this graph. Sorry, what was the question? We talked about that at last uh, uh, lecture. I'm just uh, repeating uh, for your better understanding, but let's go and uh, answer to your question. What was the question exactly? In this graph in x-axis, it is written the percentage of undamaged permeability, uh, which is multiplied by 100. And from this chart, uh, it, is, it can be read that uh, maximum 10% is undamaged and 90% is damaged, right? Well, this is the uh, percentage of damaged permeability, okay? Uh, but undamaged is the And 100%, at 100%, we have a undamaged well undamaged, unstimulated, non-stimulated well, okay? This is the, let's say, 
original conditions at this point, 100%. So below this percentage, we have damaged, okay? So this, uh, this means we have only 10% of a uh, uh, product permeability of original. Okay, so that's damaged permeability over uh, undamaged permeability. Okay. Uh, I got it, yeah, thanks. So undamaged percentage of undamaged permeability. So this is the 10% of undamaged permeability or 90% damaged permeability. Okay. So if our permeability here, undamaged, unsimilar, the original permeability is 100 millidarcy, then here we have due to the formation damage at this line we have 10, 10 millidarcy. Okay. Yes, I got it. Thanks. And we uh, talked about different uh, acid treatment types, which was uh, which is a acid washing when we just pour the acid into the uh, tubing and well bore for tubular and well bore cleaning, including the uh, perforations, uh, without any uh, additional pressure applied. Applied. Uh, matrix acidizing, which is the uh, subject of this chapter, is the uh, acid treatment uh, with injection uh, of the um, acid at matrix pressures or uh, reservoir pressures below the formation fracturing pressure. And fracture acidizing is another type of the uh, treatment uh, which um, Includes uh, fracturing the uh, well bore, uh, the uh, reservoir formation, and uh, um, injecting uh, acid uh, above the uh, fracture pressure to acidize even uh, more uh, zones around the well bore. And uh, we considered the uh, different formations, uh, different lithologies, uh, acidizing uh, objectives. So for the sandstone formation, when we have uh, <coughs> damaged uh, zones with the fine migration of the uh, solids from the uh, mud fluid, uh, the objective is uh, remove the damage uh, with the acid uh, reaction with those uh, fines and solids particles and unplugging the perforations and uh, pore network near the well bore again by the uh, uh, solving with these uh, acids, which are uh, mainly hydrofluoric, hydrochloric, uh, acetic, and formic um, acids applied here. So the main objective here is unplugging and removing the damage from the uh, uh, migrated fines and part invaded particles of the uh, mud fluids. For the carbonate formation, because of the uh, material of the uh, carbonates, we, we use a uh, um, acid, uh, must, um, uh, acid treatment or matrix acidizing to penetrate beyond the well bore region or, uh, and uh, bypass the formation damage and reach the uh, far away from the well bore uh, clear zones of the formation. So the uh, well bore has additional passes in, uh, from uh, connecting with the uh, original permeability reservoir. And that's called wormholes like uh, around the well bore, this network of these wormholes provide channels uh, of the, uh, around the uh, well bore. And um, this is uh, increasing the effective well bore radius. 
and increasing the productivity. And here we use hydrochloric um, acid, uh, acetic and formic acids. Mainly, main uh, agent here is hydrochloric acid as it uh, has a good reaction uh, with the um, carbonate material. Um, selection criteria is very important in this matrix simulation and uh, here it is important to identify the candidate well because we need to understand what type of uh, well we are work, uh, going to deal with in terms of increased hydrocarbons. So we have to make sure that there is a uh, enough or sufficient amount of uh, hydrocarbons within the drainage area of this well. So by applying or by investing into this stimulation, we will have good increase in uh, uh, produ pro production rate as well as uh, uh, and we will uh, pro produce more oil from this drainage area, from this well. Also, another point is we have to make sure that the uh, production system of this well, in other words, uh, the outflow and surface equipment or tubing and surface equipment, it will be capable uh, to uh, handle the increased volumes of the uh, uh, incremental production. Okay, so for example, if we choose a well with small diameter or uh, diameter of tubing or uh, restricted, limited uh, capacity of the flow lines or separator, then uh, what we will have at the end of the simulation, st stimulation, we may increase our production by twice or three times, but nevertheless, the uh, actual incremental oil will be much less or even negligible because of these limitations in this uh, tubing or uh, surface uh, flow lines. And therefore, uh, we have to be careful with the uh, uh, choosing a candidate well, identifying a candidate well, uh, which should be capable uh, of producing um, increased volumes. Okay. Uh, another point is important point is uh, confirming the net income from the additional uh, hydrocarbons, uh, selecting uh, treatment fluid uh, because uh, this treatment fluid should be selected with the um, um, analysis of the how this fluid will interact with the uh, formation, the minerals of the formation, cementation material, uh, formation fluids, so there is no uh, additional precipitations uh, or in, in other words, additional uh, formation damage. Uh, we have to take into account what is going to be, um, there is, uh, how these fluids will behave after the um, reaction after the operations, which is uh, called uh, how the behavior of spent fluids. Uh, so uh, uh, spent acid. So uh, when acid has done its job, solved what we wanted, uh, wanted, wanted uh, this uh, acid to, to solve. And then what happens to this, uh, the result of the uh, um, the reactions. Is it precipitating precipitating in the reservoir or is it easily uh, producible or uh, how it will affect the uh, further uh, productivity of the reservoir? And of course, uh, preparing the detailed design of the uh, including operational aspects. Uh, what to inject, how much, at what pressures, uh, these all are affecting the uh, to achieve the required economic criteria. So therefore, first we have to uh, 
estimate the potential of the production, how much we are going to get. For, for that, we have to uh, first uh, identify, uh, evaluate what is the uh, damage, what is the skin, what, uh, what is the uh, flow efficiency, current flow efficiency, and uh, as a result of the stimulation, what we, uh, how much we can expect uh, increase in the uh, increase in the uh, productivity, and we have to look at the field experience, analog wells, uh, the nearby wells experience uh, for the same uh, category of lithologies. Uh, of the world categories, etc. Then we have to estimate how long this uh, treatment effect will uh, last. In other words, how much reserves in there will outflow capacity, as we said before, and the tubing capacity, uh, facility, uh, surface facility capacity. Uh, will the expected gain handle those and also uh, how much this expected gain will aff uh, will affect the remaining reserves uh, how much in total we can produce for example if we have low uh, uh, remaining well reserves then uh, the effect of this treatment will be depending on the treatment type and the scale of the uh, treatment uh, will be uh, less, of course, because we uh, um, we spent our effort, our money for just little increase in the for this little amount of uh, remaining reserves, uh, as well as the uh, the uh, outflow or uh, surface facility capacity. Also. We have to take into account that uh, during this stimulation, the production will be uh, stopped. So this should be taken into account that uh, and uh, deducted from the uh, calculated gain, this uh, production stoppage time that we will not be producing from this well. And of course, we have to take into account kind of statistical effect that not every uh, stimulation success rate is uh, around 100 percent it's always there is some risks around this and the uh, we may not get uh, exactly what we have evaluated or estimated as a production gain okay uh, of course there are some cases when we uh, exceed the 100 percent uh, because uh, again, it's a kind of uh, town hall in the reservoir. Uh, we are just uh, estimating based on estimating. Uh, uh, we are giving our best estimation from the data that we have uh, on the surface, but uh, at the reservoir level, there might be a different uh, situation, and therefore. Uh, there might be cases when we have even higher production gain, but this is not the case to consider for any uh, economic uh, economics calculations or uh, any um, expectation calculations. Okay. So. And the last thing is to calculate what is going to be uh, the economic gain uh, cost, uh, uh, um, applying the cost of this and production uh, effect, production uh, incremental production effect, including here the equipment, uh, a, a personnel uh, rent, um, hiring. Uh, all these chemicals cost, etc., etc., because the, those chemicals 
may cost uh, a lot of money. And uh, from that point of view, uh, we have to take into account the uh, MPV, or in other words, the money that we are going to spend now to stimulate this well, and how much uh, this money uh, will pay off in, for example, six months in one year, and what will be NPV for this pro for this stimulation? Uh, um, is it uh, expected to be positive or not based on the incremental production and spent money uh, for this stimulation? Okay. Uh, this is the uh, well economics uh, for the uh, matrix stimulation considerations. Here we have a well. Uh, if you look at this chart, we have a well uh, production profile. Up to this point, it is a kind of uh, actual data. And after this point, we can we kind of drawing the uh, expected uh, production profile uh, theoretically. And then uh, cal calculate what we can uh, expect from the uh, stimulation job and how much it will increase the production. So this is the increase in production, which is called acceleration. And the acceleration will provide uh, the higher rate uh, from the uh, original rate, from the uh, rate before the simulation. So we, will we will produce some uh, additional oil, but uh, the um, and there might be some uh, as well uh, uh, increase in the reserves as well, depending on the uh, uh, wh what is the uh, the economic limit of the well. So, in other words, if we have a uh, low limit, low economic limit, which means the uh, maintenance of this well is. Uh, much requiring much lower uh, cost or uh, financing than high economic limit. Economic limit here is the balance between the maintenance cost of this well and uh, production rate of this well. So high economic limit means this well requires uh, more cost for the maintenance and therefore at much higher rates, the, uh, even at this rate, the uh, payback of this production or the uh, positive balance from the product producing this well is uh, turning to the negative. Therefore, to avoid the losses, the financial losses, we have to stop the production of this well at this, at, at this stage. Uh, medium economic limits means that at, at this stage, we have to stop the production, and low economic limits means that we have to stop production at this level. So, uh, and applying the uh, the um, any stimulation near the uh, economic limit, then it will provide some increase in reserves. Okay, because. Uh, if we wouldn't apply this, then we, we would have to stop this, uh, to stop the production from this well. And all this, uh, the integral part of this, uh, or in other words, the reserves around this well will be lost. Therefore, applying near, near uh, uh, the economic uh, limit, uh, applying the uh, asset stimulation, any stimulation, uh, near the high economic limit, uh, the economic limit of the well will provide additional, uh, along with the expected uh, rate gain, this will provide also uh, additional uh, oil produced. Okay. But if, uh, for example, if our uh, well has a low economic limit, and a limited uh, 
reserves uh, accessed or drainage area, and then uh, due to the higher rates, we may have uh, the economic limit achieved even earlier. Okay, because now we have a uh, kind of a producing. Now we have higher decline rate, and the rate at this time is lower than this time, but still we have produced the uh, additional oil and for the even medium economic limit we have this extra uh, production uh, produced oil so uh, therefore there is a uh, interplay between the um, wells decl decline rate uh, before and after uh, related to the economic limit and that is defined, determines uh, is it production acceleration or the increased reserves. Okay, so acceleration happens or consider it uh, to have to uh, in a in a wells with the uh, lower economic limit and increase in reserves is uh, seen in the uh, wells. Uh, in the high economic limits because again without this uh, stimulation we would lose this uh, or we would have to stop production at this point and we would lose all this uh, the, the uh, oil production uh, additional production uh, but here with the lower limit we what we gain is higher uh, rate or acceleration in the rate so we get uh, earlier uh, income so uh, therefore the uh, npv of this pro of this project the low limit will be higher because we get more money in the beginning of the uh, project okay uh, yes please uh, in previous slide, there is a high economic limit, medium and low. Uh, how can we determine them and what uh, does what do they say to us? Like if we uh, below, if we are below high economic limit, is it a bad thing? And what does it say to us? Well, I was explaining what is high economic and economic limit. The economic limit of a well is the limit or money that is uh, balancing between the production rate, produ sorry, income from the production and maintenance cost for this well. So each well that we are producing from requires maintenance. Okay, we have to uh, keep some uh, uh, operations. We have to. Uh, Uh, some people working on this, etc., etc., and this is the high economic limits means that this will require the, the balance between uh, production income and the maintenance cost is low, and this will because this will is uh, requires higher cost of maintenance. So every day of this will working. Uh, cost a lot of money. Therefore, uh, even at higher rates, well, relatively higher rates, the uh, this wall will come to the point that it is not economical to keep this wall producing because every barrel is not paying back. Okay. Do you get that, Orhan? Orhan? Well, Orhan asking question. Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, it was Can Orhan. Yes, yes. It was Orhan. So what happened? Orhan. Okay. Uh, anyway, 
let's continue. Uh, so, and the uh, consequently, the low economic limit means this well is, is requiring less, uh, say, cost to maintain, and we can produce from this well as long as it co it uh, crosses the point when the production income is going below the uh, cost to maintain this well. Okay, Orhan? Uh, sorry, I had uh, network connection problems. Actually, I missed some points again. Uh, could you please okay. I was uh, explaining that the, what is high economic limit and low economic limit. It is not that we do we reduce the economic limit. The economic limit we can reduce the economic limit, but uh, the, we assume that the uh, the economic limit is the uh, cost of the well. How much this well uh, takes in terms of cost, in terms of maintaining this well, because every well requires maintaining maintenance and. If the cost of the, if the income from the production does not cover this maintenance, then with the uh, every barrel produced from this well is getting negative balance. So we are losing with this well, even if it is producing. Okay, and therefore the wells with high economic limits, or in other words, wells with high cost of maintenance. Will, uh, should be stopped production when they uh, achieve the uh, point when the uh, income does not cover uh, the uh, cost of maintenance. Okay, therefore, the high economic limits mean high cost of maintenance. Low economic limits mean low cost of the, uh, maintenance. And the higher the economic limit the earlier the well will be stopped for, from production, will be uh, kind of uh, idled from the production, okay? Is that the answer uh, you were looking, looking for? Uh, yes, and is it about statistics like high economics? No, it's about economics. Uh, okay. Okay. Yes. Thanks. So, in this uh, <clears throat> graph, you can see that uh, this is a uh, acceleration case when, without stimulation, the well is producing uh, some uh, low rates, and with the stimulation, we increase the rate. And then, uh, and you can see it's a economic limit is away from the uh, well rates. And the uh, here we have a, a uh, acceleration, or in other words, we have a increase of rate, additional rate that is much higher than uh, before the stimulation, rate before the stimulation, but total production may be the same, okay, or maybe a little bit less, but still NPV of this project, of this stimulation project will be uh, good enough to do this stimulation because now we will produce at early time much more money, okay, much more oil, which means the, the more economic, more uh, at early stage, and from the MPV, this earlier money will provide better MPV than this oil from the later stage. Okay, because uh, at this point, for example, we have a uh, less uh, inflation rate than here, so. A million barrel, a million or million dollar at this point is much more than million dollar at this point. Okay. Is that clear? 
you will get it in uh, uh, economics, but uh, I'm trying to give this uh, perception of PV to you now because you are now you are going to use it in other projects as well. Uh, in this case, when we start the production, uh, when we start the stimulation, so what happens here? We have a uh, stimulation. Uh, sorry, with the no stimulation, this ball is producing up to the ultimate recovery or the, the reserves that is uh, aimed to and uh, and payback time is, as you can see, um, later, very uh, much later. But here, by the stimulation, we get this uh, payback time much earlier, and also we may increase the uh, reserves that accessed from this simulation. Uh, as we've seen here, we increase the production and also for high economic limits and medium economic limits, we have additional uh, production because if we if we had a uh, high economic limit well, then we would have stopped this production and we wouldn't produce not only this part, this well, this production additional, but also this uh, um, integral of this uh, uh, line as a total production, as a reserves, producible reserves. Here, uh, the well, um, so, this line, the bold line, is uh, showing the acceleration because we started, uh, we produce much more and faster, sorry, the mass, uh, sorry, faster, the same amount of the oil. So this is the ultimate recovery. So how much this world can produce. And here, the without simulation, this world is producing the same amount, but for longer time, which means MPV will be lower. But here we are producing the same amount because this is the ultimate recovery. So the, the total uh, production uh, is the same. Uh, we produce the same amount, but much faster. Uh, MPV will be uh, much uh, better, much higher. But also by the stimulation, we can produce more than this uh, initial uh, ultimate recovery because now we uh, kind of by the uh, involving additional access reserves we can produce even more because now we also uh, um, prolonged or elongated the time of the production so uh, we get more than uh, initial estimated ultimate recovery uh, amount, uh, volumes. Is that clear? This economics, uh, is it clear for you? Any questions about that? Uh, I have a question actually. Yes. Uh, I thought conventionally uh, less drawdown is, uh, let's say, more attractive for engineers, but it causes less, um, not less production, flow rate uh, will, will be less, but it will not damage formation very much. In case of, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, in case of uh, stimulation, we'll have accelerated flow rate. I don't know, is it too high or much? Uh, can we damage uh, reservoir or can we have limits from somewhere because of that? Well, uh, that's depend on uh, depends on your uh, aim. Your, uh, for example, uh, when the um, consortium came to the uh, uh, Azerbaijan for the ACG project. They started with the very uh, high product production rates, 
And uh, why would would they do that? What do you think? Then the uh, uh, specialist in soccer were uh, warning that you will get damage, uh, you will get sand because of these high rates, etc., etc. And uh, the um, that's that's because of the economics. When you do the uh, production, uh, when you are, when you are a uh, kind of coming here to uh, and buying the license. Your aim to produce more in the beginning, for, so to produce uh, as much as possible from the beginning in, in a uh, not only period of contract, but MPV is more important here, and MPV is dependent of the time. The early you get the money, again, if you look at this line is without stimulation line. This means that we will produce the same amount of oil because this is the ultimate recovery. So this well will produce the same amount of oil as this well, stimulated, sorry, stimulated well, but this well will produce this amount in uh, more than twice or uh, two, and a, two and a half time uh, later than this well. OK, that means million dollar that we gain or income at this point will be much less than million dollar that we gain at this point. OK, because by this time, which is let's say if this is a month, a one year or two years or maybe 10 years or five years, the inflation rate might, will be much higher. And when we apply it to MPV calculations, so uh, 1 million at this point will be uh, 9,900,000. Uh, at, at this point, at later time, the 1 million from the uh, net present value will be a, uh, only uh, maybe uh, 800 or 750,000 pounds. So, and you can spend this million here to, for another project, not waiting the, 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 the same million here for another project. OK, and that's the economics. And also uh, the drawdown. I didn't talk about drawdown. I mentioned just drawdown because we may uh, involve more uh, um, reserves because of uh, better drawdown because we remove the dam uh, damage before the damage was there. We have to apply higher drawdown to produce this well, but with the uh, removed drawdown, when we increase the permeability around the well bore, then this drawdown will be less, but the production rate will be higher. So uh, at the same uh, drawdown or even less drawdown, we can uh, not only increase production rate, but also we may uh, increase the, dra the uh, drainage area of this well. OK, and therefore this uh, well uh, will be producing not only at higher rates, so producing the same amount of oil uh, faster, but also we may produce more. So you can see that if we consider this uh, Tri this triangle, which is the uh, integral of this triangle, is the uh, uh, total production after the stimulation. It might be more than this integral of this, okay? And we get accelerated rate, okay? But it is certainly for high economic well, economic limit well, uh, we had to stop this well production. so. Did not total produ produced amount from this wall would be only this amount, this integral. But now with even high economic limit well, because it's now producing uh, uh, more, we just uh, increase the uh, production and we produce more uh, in terms of the uh, relative to this integral. 
Okay. Is that clear? Yes, it's clear. Thanks. Sure. If you have any more questions, just ask. Sorry, Al Khaman, may I ask yes. one question? Yes, so, uh, so we stop the production and starting to do simulation when we see that uh, the outcome doesn't meet, uh, I mean, our, how to say, uh, expenditure. You mean that? No, oh, this is the schematic. Uh, if you are based on this, this is the schematic. Actually, we, of course, we would start uh, the uh, um, the um, stimulation before we uh, the world stopped. That that's that is the uh, uh, kind of a uh, choosing or selecting correct well. Uh, but sometimes, yes, the well stops, uh, we just uh, miss this point and well stops producing and then we start stimulation to uh, reinstate the uh, production uh, from this well and remove the damage and we increase the production and we increase the uh, uh, access to reserves so we produce uh, not only at high rates but also additional production. But to do the stimulation, of course, we have to stop the well, okay? Because we have to uh, prepare the well for the uh, operations because, because we are now going to inject fluids not produced from them. So we have to kill the well, uh, stop the well, start injecting and prepare some uh, operations. Uh, it might be a uh, very short time, it might be very long time uh, relatively, depending on the well conditions, depending on the, uh, for example, if we have leakage in the well, which can be uh, kind of uh, lived with uh, uh, production, low, especially low production rates, but this uh, leakage in tubing may, may be a dramatic effect if we start injecting. So we, we may have uh, to change the tubing or change some wellhead uh, configuration to, so that the uh, the well facility uh, will stand with the new conditions of injection of acid uh, compositions etc etc so it depending depending on the uh, well conditions uh, fluids are, uh, and pressures applied uh, this time of stoppage uh, for the operations may be different. So it may be very short or even no uh, stoppage time, very, uh, uh, just to st st uh, connect the injection line and start injecting, uh, which is rarely, but uh, that might be short and long, okay? Okay, thank you. So we came to the end of today's lecture. Unfortunately, we didn't uh, progress well, but the main thing that you understand what we are talking about, and I hope you understand. If you, if there is any uh, challenge to understand or any uh, unclear points, again, please write to me, ask uh, at any time, uh, via any uh, platforms, email, Teams, or WhatsApp, whatever you you can uh, connect with me and ask the questions that you are uh, you have good questions. Okay, that are, are that are available to you and uh, ask the questions. Uh, um, so uh, I will answer you, okay? Uh, thanks for your attention, thanks for your listening and uh, questions. Um, see you tomorrow. Thank you, Elham, see you. Thank you, teacher, see you tomorrow. Thank you, teacher, see you. So, so man.